I look like a play or something, don't I? Woo! Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at our Savior's this morning. Uh, I am Pastor Kiri. Pastor Maria tested positive for COVID yesterday. So, uh, she has mild symptoms and is doing just fine. Wanted you all to know that. So, uh, we'll pray for her and she'll do her time of quarantine and will be back with us in no time. Uh, if you are new to our saviors, we, would, uh, we welcome you and we would love to connect with you. We do have a connection card that's on our website. Uh, you can find it under connect. We also have some paper copies on our welcome center. Uh, today, of course, is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the women. So whether you are a mother, grandmother, aunt, cousin, sister, godmother, neighbor, teacher, or anything else, we know that you have made an impact on the children in your life. And for that, we thank you and recognize the important role you play in shaping those young people. So, uh, any of you who are all the women, we invite you. There are some special treats. Maybe you saw them coming in on the table. Please take one as you leave today. If there's someone in your life that you want to thank who's uh, in a caring and mothering role for you, please take one for them as well. I think we should give a round of applause to all those people in our lives, shall we? Uh, as long as we are celebrating today, I would just like to announce that yesterday, Clarence and Mert celebrated their 73rd anniversary. 73rd! So happy anniversary, Clarence and Mert. We got a wave. We got a wave there. Uh, just a few other things to highlight. Next Sunday, May 15th, is Sermon in Song. What a wonderful uh, time of worship and celebration we'll have with a service just filled with music. And then the following Sunday, May 22nd, we have Pastor Hilt Hammer as our guest preacher as part of our 150th anniversary celebration. And his wife Donna will be here as well, so be sure to be here to greet them. Uh, today, you may have seen you have a time and talent form in your happenings. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the offering time. Um, so those are all of the announcements for this morning. At this time, I invite you to stand and in our places, we'll share the peace with one another with a smile or a wave. Please remain standing as we join in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, our God, who raised Jesus to new life, who calls us to love our neighbors. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Gracious God, you send us salvation in Jesus. Yet we struggle to walk in your ways. We don't always say or do the loving thing. We don't take time to get to know our neighbors. We hold back from connecting with people around us. Forgive us, Lord. Fill us with your spirit and empower us to build strong communities. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God knows we fall short. That's why Jesus came. Hear the good news. For Jesus' sake, God forgives your sins and strengthens you in love. Amen. We join in our opening song.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to live out your love in concrete ways with those who live around us. Help us find the people who will do this with us, connecting us to those in our neighborhoods ready to share community. As we live lives of love, may we make our neighborhoods, our towns, and our world more like you dream they can be. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Our uh, first reading today is from Genesis, the 12th chapter. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel verse. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. 
After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Won't you please, won't you please, please won't you love thy neighborhood? I love that every time. Uh, today, we are wrapping up this series, Love Thy Neighborhood. And so let me ask, how really can you love your neighborhood? As we've been talking these last two weeks, it's one thing to say it and another to take concrete steps to reach out and build relationships to share love in our neighborhoods. Throughout this series, we've been taking seriously the challenge that came from a person whose name is synonymous with love. This is a person who not only taught about love, but lived a life that is a core example of how to live a life of love. It's Jesus. And Jesus challenges us with these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This whole series is based on this simple premise. What if when Jesus told us to love our neighbors, he meant our actual next door neighbors. Often our temptation is to define neighbor in such broad terms that our actual next door neighbors get overlooked. When we hear love your neighbor, we define it as trying to love everyone. But Jay Pathak, author of The Art of Neighboring, says the problem is when we aim for everything, we hit nothing. When we insist we're neighbors with everybody, often we end up being neighbors with nobody. What if we take Jesus' challenge to love our actual neighbors? What if we decide that we will, more than wish them well from a distance, actually build relationships to be the kind of community that God calls us to be? To intentionally and actually build relationships, we might consider doing these things. Bring our neighbors to mind every day. Be excited to see them. Listen to them. Have time for them. And make them and what they want a priority in your life. These are the building blocks of any important relationship, aren't they? That's what we're doing today. Making a plan to have important relationships with people right next to us. During this series, we've been using this tool, the neighbor map, to help us better love and be present in our neighborhoods. And during week one, we determined to know our neighbors' names. Now, some of you told me, I've got all eight spots filled. And some of you set out to find a few you didn't know. In week number two, we determined to get to know our neighbors. We challenged one another to be willing and ready to interact with them. Did anyone have a little extra linger time around the mailbox this past week? My own mother had watched our service online and took this seriously, let me tell you. 
we moved my parents, who have relocated here from South Dakota due to health reasons, into a detached townhouse in Dayton, Minnesota, just last Saturday. And after hearing Pastor Maria's sermon on Sunday, on Monday morning, my mom put on her coat, walked across the street, and knocked on the door of the neighbors just across from them. And they answered! They had a wonderful introductory conversation. Turns out they have spent winters in nearly the same place in Arizona. And my mom is feeling confident to host some driveway happy hours soon to get to know them better and to invite others too. Good job, Mom, and happy Mother's Day too. As we conclude this series today, we're going to challenge you to take the next step in these neighborhood relationships. A step that could begin to transform your neighborhood. But before I do that, I want to share a story with you. A lot of what we're doing in this series is just asking ourselves to be brave and follow Jesus' call to make a difference with real people who are near to us. There's a story that's gained traction over just the past 10 days about a stranger who made a difference in two girls' lives over 20 years ago. This video tells us more. I was wondering if you can help me find Tracy. Tracy is a woman that my sister and I met on a plane 20 years ago when we were fleeing my country of former Yugoslavia. We came here as refugees and we flew on a flight from Amsterdam to Minnesota. My sister spoke English and I didn't speak any English at the time. We were trying to communicate and talk um, with miming and, and knitting together. And they ended up giving us an envelope and told us not to read it or open it until we left the plane. On the outside of the envelope was an amazing message of welcome. I treasure this because as time goes by, I've experienced that in most cases, Welcomes like this are very uncommon. I opened the envelope and inside of the envelope was a hundred dollar bill. It might not seem like a lot to some, but to us, it was an inordinate amount of money that helped us uh, survive that entire summer. And three months uh, of that um, helped us be able to be placed with the host family. We would not have been able to survive those three months I want to be able to find Tracy to thank her for her generosity, for her kindness, for her empathy, and for welcoming my sister and I. I was wondering if you could help me find her. Well, guess what? Tracy has been found. This video actually became a story on CNN, and it was her handwriting on that envelope that caused Tracy's daughter and another friend to say, this has got to be you. I especially love this story because I know Tracy. She was a member of the church in Coon Rapids where I was a pastor and she now lives in Blaine. Tracy is someone who shares love and joy and kindness wherever she goes. It's true. And just a few days ago, Tracy and those two girls, now grown women with impressive careers, were able to reconnect over Zoom. Here's a little more of the story. Fast forward 20 years later, Ida graduated from BU and works in a nonprofit field in Boston. But the one thing missing in their lives was Tracy. And for the past 10 years, Ida has been searching for her kind stranger through social media. And I noticed there was this woman, Ashley, who said, like, this is my mom. I recognized her handwriting. You're looking for Tracy Peck. The kind stranger is Tracy Peck from Minnesota. And just this week, the family's connected over Zoom. It's so wonderful to meet you. I wanted to show you if I kept on looking at the, the thoughtful note and it kind of really made me realize that there is goodness in people. Kindness is something that you're given. It's a gift. It's a true gift from God. It was a no-brainer for me to do this for you girls because it was just like, I just was so touched by your story. An act of kindness from a stranger more than two decades old and then remembered like it was yesterday. In Boston, I'm Paul Burton, WBZ News. I reached out to Tracy and she said it has been a whirlwind. So far she's done interviews with CNN, the Star Tribune, Washington Post, Public Radio, and Channel 4 News. She's thrilled to be able to spread the message of welcome and kindness and what it can do. On this Mother's Day, I especially love one of the things Tracy said. 
She said in an interview with CNN that she already has five children, three daughters, and two stepsons. But she feels that now she has two more. They may have been strangers 23 years ago when Tracy wrote that note on the plane. But now, she says, they are family. It's an outcome and blessing she never would have dreamed of all those years ago. We never know the impact our simple acts of kindness might have on people, do we? Or even the impact they might end up having on us. That's really what this series, Love Thy Neighborhood, has been about. It's a way to encourage us to follow Jesus' words and go for it, to take action and reach out to create the kind of neighborhoods and the kind of world we believe God envisions. So today, for the final concrete strategy in how to do this, it's Jesus' words again that will guide us. Find a person of peace. As Jesus prepared to travel from town to town, neighborhood to neighborhood, to spread his message of love, he sent his disciples ahead of him to each town he intended to visit, and he gave them these instructions. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you. Jesus lays out an important strategy for loving a neighborhood, and it's called the person of peace strategy. He's saying you don't have to do this alone. Seek out allies and use their gifts to complement yours. Probably every city, every community, and every neighborhood has these people. You can identify them by two key characteristics of a person of peace. Number one, influence. People know them and trust them. And number two, receptivity. They offer hospitality and include you with respect for your beliefs, even if they don't embrace your beliefs themselves. Who in your neighborhood might already have connections that could help you in gathering people together? Could you reach out to them with your idea and ask them to help you? Like, hey, if you invite people, I'll do the setup and provide the treats, or something like that. Jesus knew if his disciples, his small group of 12 followers, could connect with insiders from the community, they could leverage that influence to bring Jesus' love to the whole community. The same is true for us. Who could you partner with in your neighborhood to help you reach out and gather people together? Aren't we so grateful? Well, it doesn't really look like it today, but the weather is turning. Yesterday was beautiful, wasn't it? This is a great time to gather people outside together. How could you make this happen in your neighborhood? We have a team from our saviors that since last September has been part of a synod program called Faith and Neighboring Practices. Uh, we applied for and were awarded a grant for this, actually. So this team is re-engaging with spiritual practices in our own lives and soon our congregation so that we can authentically engage with our neighborhood, hear about the needs in our neighborhood, and trust that God is already active in the community beyond our church's walls. This summer, our team's project will be to host several events called Neighborhood Night Out. We have uh, identified three neighborhoods nearby that we want to host an opportunity for neighbors to get together. And we'll be there as listeners. We believe it's so important to go where people are and to hear them speak about their needs and their neighborhood's needs. We want the events to be within walking distance for these neighbors. So one at one, we're going to gather in a cul-de-sac, in another in a neighborhood park, and at another a picnic shelter nearby. A key is to have in each of these neighborhoods someone already there who can extend the invitation. The person of peace, as Jesus calls them. Our team is excited and we'll be offering some opportunities for more of you to get involved as we continue our planning. But you don't have to wait for us. You can do something in your own neighborhood now. Think of your person of peace who you want to invite to come alongside you 
and then plan what you could do to bring your neighborhood together. We're not going to tell you exactly what to do because you need to pray and do a little listening to help you determine what it might be. It might be a block party. It might be some sort of service event. It could be a 4th of July parade or picnic. It could be a bonfire and s'mores night or an ice cream social. It might be something you never would have thought of sitting in this room today. But as you pray and listen and partner with the person of peace, you will know how to reach out to your neighborhood. Finally, your stories of connection might not make CNN, but your life could be changed. Your neighbor's life could be changed, and one by one, our neighborhoods can bring change in our communities and our world. Love God and love your neighbor. The greatest commandment is this. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called to love our neighbors, we pray for those in our neighborhoods and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, help us pull the right people to walk alongside us as we seek to connect with our neighbors. Give us courage and the commitment to be your presence in our neighborhoods, bringing people together to make the world more reflective of your love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God on this Mother's Day, we pray for mothers we love and for mothers we struggle to love, for adoptive mothers, stepmothers, and foster mothers, for those who long to be mothers, for women in our lives who have loved and supported us, for women who have nurtured us in the faith, 
give rest, healing, wisdom, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, in this late spring season, we pray for the parts of our state and nation that are facing challenges. Be with those experiencing flooding and the devastation it can bring. And for those areas at risk of fire, urge all people to use caution and not cause fire to get out of control. Give strength to the firefighters and first responders called to dangerous situations. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. Move the leaders to find a way through to stop the fighting and suffering of so many people and bring life again. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, walk alongside those in need of help and healing today. We especially pray for Vi Leipzig, Sarah DeYoung, Sandy Bone, Ryan DeYoung, Pat Nelson, Laverne Johnson, Jovita Romero, Fran Monday, David Kappelhoff, David Bone, Dan Hammerbeck, Colleen Bosney, Sherry, Bruce Bloxham, Brendan Schiffenhauser, Brenda Varney, Barb Minder, and Linda Deacon. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, comfort those who mourn, including Nancy Calvo and family at the death of her husband, Everett. Today we also pray for the Westwood Middle School community in Spring Lake Park that lost a student, Leo, to suicide. We pray for the students, teachers, staff, and family as they grieve his death. Guide those who are suffering in such dark places to find help and support. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, today we give thanks for the gift of life, for new life that you will give in baptism to Remy Scott Hazelton. Bless her and her parents and sponsors as they raise her in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. All these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we lift to you, O Lord, trusting in the power of your love and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It's uh, time for us to consider our offerings, so I remind you there are various ways to give. If you are wor worshiping in person, you can place your offering in the baskets on the stands as you leave today. You can also always mail in a check, text a dollar amount to the number on the screen, or give through the website, oursaviorslc.org. Today, we are also taking some time to think about how we not only give financially, but how we give of ourselves, our time and our talents. So if you have handy the yellow sheet that's in your happenings, I invite you to take it out now. This is a really simple time and talent, a way just to reach out to you and say, do you have interests? Do you have areas where you might feel called to serve? You're not signing your life away if you check a box. Checking a box just means, hey, I'd like to hear more, and someone will reach out to you. So I invite you to, we're going to have a, just a few minutes with some music. I invite you to uh, fill this out. And then there are some special baskets as you leave today that you'll be able to put these in, uh, baskets that are separate from the offering basket. So please take just a minute now.
Let us pray as we give thanks to God for all the gifts that God has given us, ourselves, our resources, and one another. Let us pray. Loving God, you provide for our needs and gather us at your table. Bless our lives and the gifts we offer, that they might be used to bless others for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it is time for communion, so if you are uh, in person, you can get your kits handy. We'll open them together in just a moment. If you're at home, you can get your bread and wine or juice ready. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words as you open your kits and receive communion, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of all, in this meal of love and grace, you have strengthened us. Send us into a hurting world that we might share your love with our neighbors and change the world for the better. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And receive the blessing. May the risen Lord guide your steps, fill you to overflowing with love, 
and grant you courage, strength, and hope. The Lord bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love your neighbor. We will. Thanks be to God.